Data is one of the two components that exist inside every computer program. This fact makes data a crucial part of computer programming. Let's take a closer look at data inside computer programs. Understanding data is a primary skill when it comes to computer programming. This discussion is all about data. We will kick things off by looking at what data actually is inside computer programs. Then we will see how data is used to represent the world. And once we know how data is used to rep the world, we'll look at how data is used to bring the world into our computer programs. After we know how this is done, we'll have the building blocks needed to understand how the world is represented inside computer programs. Before we look at what data is inside a computer program, let's think about what data is in the real world. As humans, we make sense of the world through data. We capture data with our senses, and we use this data to represent the world in our minds. One of the major ways we capture data is with our eyes. Our eyes take in a lot of, da lot of data. And we use this data to do things. We saw in the computer programming video that computers do data. And this is what makes computers and specifically programming such a powerful tool. We make decisions, take actions, and communicate using data. And since computers do data, they can do all of those things as well. In a computer program, data is either text or a number. You may have heard before that computers only deal with zeros and ones. This is true for the actual computer hardware, but nowadays most programs deal with data that comes in the form of numbers or text. As programmers, we almost never deal with zeros and ones directly. This type of programming is done by specialists, and our aim here is to use programming as a general purpose tool. Let's look at an example that you're probably familiar with. This program is called Google Search, and it needs data to do its task. The data Google needs is text, so we'll put in the text Deep Lizard and click Enter. We get back more text all about Deep Lizard. This is an example of a computer doing data. We put in text and we get out more text. Even though this is just text, it's powerful because of what the text represents. The text represents something in the real world, in this case, websites. Cool story, bro. Let's look more specifically at how data is used to represent the world. There are two relevant categories that describe how this is done. We have qualitative data and quantitative data. Qualitative data allows us to represent qualities or categories, and quantitative data allows us to represent quantities. We use qualitative data to describe the world with text, and we use quantitative data to measure the world with numbers. Let's look at some approachable examples that we are all probably familiar with. On the qualitative side, we have things like our first name, our last name, phone number, email, birthday, and gender. On the quantitative side, we have things like our height, our weight, our number of family members, our age, and our bankroll. These qualities and quantities are used to represent us as humans inside computer programs. Sites like Facebook do this, for example. Check out the sign up page for Facebook. They ask us for our first name, last name, phone number, email, birthday, and gender. And this is just to get started. Facebook continues to collect our data as we use the service. Facebook's most valuable asset is how well it knows you. Every post you like, every page you follow, every friend you make tells Facebook a bit more about who you are. All of this data is used to better represent each human inside computer programs. In Facebook's case, the better represented we are, the more money they can make serving ads to us. Last year, Facebook made 98% of its revenue on advertising. That's $39.9 billion. And all of this valuable data comes down to some numbers and some text, ABCs and 123s, like that's it. It's simple, but very powerful. The power in data comes into play when we can build representations of the world using data. 
Being able to see how things can be represented using text and numbers is a critical skill for programmers. Let's talk about how this is done inside programs. The way this is done inside programs is very similar to how it is done in real life. I want you to notice how each of these items on the quantitative side and on the qualitative side aren't the actual data, but instead refer to the data. These words are just labels that allow us to refer to the data. The actual data is the text or number values these labels represent. In real life, we might say, my name is Deep Lizard. In this example, the data is the text value, Deep Lizard. And the label is the word, name. If we want to work with a piece of data in a program, we need the actual data value. That'll be text or a number. And we also need a word that is used to refer to the data value. If we look back at the Facebook signup program, we can see the data the program wants to reference. These are the labels or the words that will refer to the text values we type in. The moment we type in deep lizard for the first name, the data is created and will exist inside the program and can be accessed through the reference first name. Once the program has this data, it can do whatever it wants with it. It can store it, manipulate it, or send it off to a faraway land. When the program wants to do any of these things, it uses the reference first name to access the value deep lizard. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go with no on that. Uh, I, I, am, I am not a lizard. Um... The main point here is that data inside computer programs is just text and numbers. One of the most critical skills of programming is the ability to figure out how things in the real world can be represented using text and numbers. We take objects and concepts from the real world and describe their qualities with text and their quantities with numbers. This is how we represent the world inside computer programs. What do you think of this description of data? Can you draw the comparison between how we as humans perceive the world with data and how it is done with computer programs? Let me know what you're thinking in the comments.